Welcome back all you witches and wizards to another crafting video by me, the Greg Who Lived. Continuing on the magic on my last video in which we made our own Hogwarts house ties, I thought there was one thing that we were missing. And of course, that's the one thing we need to make magic happen. A magic wand! To help continue the magic of Harry Potter at home, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own Harry Potter inspired magic wand with some very simple craft materials. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. This visual guide comes from the Insight Edition Harry Potter Imagining Hogwarts. However, I'm going to be changing just a couple of steps to make it a tiny bit simpler. To make your own magic wand, you will need the following. A wand core, for example, a chopstick. To build the wand, we need to mould around a base. So you could use a chopstick, a pencil, or even a twig. Air drying clay. This is some simple air drying clay from a craft shop. It's super squishy, easy to mould, and dries in 24 hours. Paint brushes. You're going to need some paint brushes in whichever size you feel comfortable with. Acrylic paint in your chosen colours. For my wand, I've chosen to go for a natural wood brown, and also this silver to add a metallic finish. Small objects for adding details to your wand. I managed to find some pennies, a button, and some string to add details to my wand, but the possibilities are completely endless. Step one is adding clay for a handle. So you need to take your chopstick or whatever you're gonna use for your handle, and we're gonna take some clay and then just squish it over one end. So this is gonna form the handle and the bit that you hold onto when casting your spells. Step two is to smooth out your clay. Now the Wizarding World instructions say to use another chopstick, however I much prefer to just get hands on with it and smooth out as best I can. I decided to go larger at the base and then gradually smaller, as you can see here. Step 3 is to add texture with your found objects. Now I decided to use a penny to go in the base as I thought it would give some nice decoration and a string to use as a handle. I started by putting the coin on the bottom and sculpting over it and then I put the string and wrapped it around the clay. This way, when it dried, I could remove it and have the texture underneath. I then added some knots in the wood by using the chopstick. And then I used the edge of the chopstick to just add some more detailing in the wood texture. And this is what it looked like when I was finished. You then want to wait 24 hours for your clay to dry and it goes from this to something which looks a bit more like this. Step 3.5 is to remove any texture objects. Now, some of you might not have done this step, so you can be right ahead, but for those that did, you just need to remove them, like I am here with the string. As you can see, where the string is being removed, I have some really nice indentations. So what I'm going to do is use the silver paint to highlight these and give some depth to my wand design. Not to mention the wood lines I put in and the knots. Step 4 is to paint your wand. Now this is the fun bit. So I decided to use some brown paint and just to cover the entire wand in one layer. There's no reason why you couldn't use bright colours or any colour you like, but it's always good to make sure you've got the whole of your wand covered. You don't want any bits that are not painted. So here you can see I'm painting the base quite well as the clay does absorb the paint very well. And then I'm moving on to the rod. This bit can be a bit tricky. As you can see, I definitely got my hands a bit dirty with paint, but that's all part of the fun. And here you can see I'm just giving a second layer to certain bits. I wanted to add a hint of silver to my wand, so to do this I'm going to be dry brushing it on. And that is simply putting a little bit of paint onto the end of your brush, and then brushing it very lightly and very gently into the indents made into the clay by the string. As you can see I don't always stay in the lines, but it's completely up to you how neat or messy you want to be. And I also remembered to paint the coin at the bottom of my wand. This last step is optional, but it's just adding some darker lines and details to the wand. Now, earlier we added the knots and the wood marks, and so to add more depth and detail, I'm just using a marker and going over the knots and the lines to make everything look a bit more detailed. And there we have it. There is our finished wand. I might not be Ollivander, but I'm definitely happy with how this turned out. Here you can see up close exactly how all the details come together to making this wand that extra bit special and magical. And with that, we have our finished magic wands. Now, there's no reason why you can't be as creative and as inventive as you want with your wand, or 
why not try recreating your favourite character's wand from the series? The possibilities are really endless and each one is just as magical as the last. Now remember, these are just magic toy wands, so don't try recreating any magic, especially when you're not at Hogwarts or in the presence of any muggles. However, if you'd like to find out what your Ollivander's wand would be, head over to the wizardingworld.com website where you can find the official Ollivander's wand quiz. In the quiz, you can find out what your wand core would be, your wand length, your wand wood, and the personality of your wand. As well as the quiz, there's also lots more trivia, lots more magic, and a lot more fun and games. And lastly, don't forget to check out the newest chapters of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, as we hear all about Harry's first year adventures at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. For more crafts, games, and fun, you can join the Harry Potter fan club at wizardingworld.com for even more magic.